Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank Look you. Yeah. Thank you, John. Six, six to nothing. It's like a Sounds more like game. a football game now. No. Oh. Read some. <laughs> All right. So I handed out the minutes. Thank you, Steve, for putting those together. <laughs> um, any additions, deletions, changes? Second, read those. <clears throat> All right. Are we waiting for everyone to read them? Yeah, waiting for them. I make a move to approve the uh, the minutes as written. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Again, six to nine. Ooh, me. Um, <clears throat> anybody can jump in on this one, the uh, Hebo Hybo lot visit. Um, there was Wayne, John, Steve, me, Dan, and your niece. Um, <laughs> and I'm sorry I forgot. She's Addie. Addie. Yes. Um, <clears throat> Drove out through the the road, the wilds, if you can call it a road, right. and uh, then hiked in to the, where you thought the property ended on the road. We didn't get off the road much, but uh, good idea of what was out there and, and what some issues may be and um, concerns. We voiced a few. Anybody else wants to? John or Wayne, jump in here. I know the access, the road going in is pretty tough. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I'm not sure. I had a few thoughts on what could possibly be done. I don't know if it could be logged and the town could make a little bit of money. Let's, um, I put that under new business. Oh, okay. So we can talk about that lot in the town farm lot, maybe at the same time, and see okay. if we can do something. And but, I was trying to think of any uses other than that, just to come up with something, because that's obviously seems like the easiest and probably the most effective way to just turn that into some sort of use. But it either bring, in my mind anyway, it brings in too much undesirable traffic, mm. or there's not enough traffic because of the road being right. So I didn't come up with any anything good. Is, is there any foraging ability out there? Foraging, like main foraging, like for food. There was no uh, mushrooms or anything like that. Well, we had to stop. Depending upon your vehicle, we had to stop. Probably, I mean, a normal vehicle. Let's say a non four wheel drive vehicle. My vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> had to stop about a thousand feet short of even being on the lot. The road was that bad. Okay. And then once we got onto the road frontage, that is the town lot. The spring storm in April brought a bunch of stuff down across the road. The road was flooded to shin deep in most of the places. So access and also from the uh, Lebanon side of the road, where I, the, the town lot is actually closer to the Lebanon end than to the Acton end at that point, and the Lebanon side while it has better access, is gated. So um, we have that whole do we, don't we, good access, bad access, and there was a lot of four-wheeler side-by-side damage to the brook adjacent to the road in the stretch that was on town property without question. So, and that has been all since the logging that took place in 06. So there's definitely some updating and some work that I feel most likely by schedule should be done, but we have got all these other issues to tend to, uh, you know, good versus bad, and, and, and like John was talking about, um, so we can get into that later, I suppose. Mm -hmm. 
I, there might be some opportunity for some wildlife habitat improvement. Yeah. There's what some bogs in there and, and uh, wet areas that yep. might do something. And, it is the headwaters of the uh, little river in that stretch, and it is adjacent to some, um, I don't know if they're prime wetlands, but they're definitely greater than 10 acres in some spots. Not necessarily on the town property are the wetlands that large, but uh, adjacent to it on some of the neighboring lots is the uh, swamp that feeds into the little river open up into larger wetlands above it, in fact, upstream. So. There are right. concerns that we have, uh, should have, on its water quality and such too. Like possible future site for educational. If you can get there. For wildlife, yeah, we'd have to get there first, right? I, I think also you're going to have to think of years to come with the influx of people in the lakes. That we're probably maybe 10, 15 years away from the town wide sewage and water treatment, and where would you draw that water from, and where would you put the uh, above, uh, you know, the septic sewer system, which would be extensive. So th that's coming. I mean, you see how close those, some of these houses are in the lake. Yeah. And it's not, you know, one week and a two weekends of summer, at least people are living here around there. And it's coming. But like you say, this particular cyclop, perhaps it could be a potential water source for drinking. You know, you know. I mean, these things should be kept in the back of your mind, right? or somebody should be thinking about it. Is it going to come quickly fast? I, I did notice there was a, a house for sale on Hebo High Road. Mm -hmm. Where was that when we first drove in? There is only one. If it was on that, it, that I didn't notice that that's what the sign was for. It was for a house on Hebo High Road, not a property. It might have been a property because there is only one house on the Hebo High yeah. Road, and it's pretty close to adjacent to the pit that was on the left when yeah. we drove in. There's a house immediately on the right. Yeah. yeah. So if it's a house, that's the only one. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know if it was unless it's a lot something at the other end. I think it was a house. Yeah. Good. Anything else? Okay. I think your comments, Joe, really lead into uh, old business, the need for an updated comprehensive plan. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to ask Dan to maybe speak on that just for a second. Um, I, I yeah. know that at one of the previous while ago, went back when, um, when I think one of the early meetings there was discussion of part of the direction of the work of this committee and wanting to make sure that any action that's taken, development of any town lots or conservation, there's some guidance. You know, what areas of the town do you want development, what areas of the town do you want to preserve? And so I know that that had been brought up was need of a comprehensive plan. So just you know bring that discussion back to see if that's something that you know you folks still would like to have a need and um, you know consideration I mean you could do whatever you want with that you could make a recommendation <coughs> to the board that you know you, you feel you, you should we should consider looking into it you can just start working on a section of yourselves to kind of you know however you want to take it if you feel like that's going to be beneficial mm -hmm. but I know that, that was discussed because as you're now that the committee you know you folks have done a lot of work you said you want to know, is this work going to fit into the plan for the town? Conserving, but also population growth. Like we're talking about towns continuing to grow. We want to make sure that whatever action is taken or recommended is in line with the overall goal of the town. Well, a good thought for that, too, um, didn't necessarily just occur to me, but to try to dovetail all of this together. If the committee is going to be called upon to give recommendations up the ladder to the selectmen into the town and presumably to town meeting for anything like this, the question of whether or not what we are doing is uh, endorsed by or supported by the comprehensive plan is inevitably going to come up any time the comprehensive plan is talked about. So I guess what we need to do, one of 
we need to look into this a little bit more and say, you know, uh, do we have any support in order to go get another comprehensive plan? How frequently do comprehensive plans come along? This, these things are usually brought about by Southern Maine Regional Planning through large grants that go toward these things. So I guess my, my comment would be to help the committee is one of two different things. We need to say, okay, the, the comprehensive plan is either still hold, holds good goals and we can therefore still use it to a certain extent as a recommending supporting document for our recommendations upstream to the selectmen and town meeting or we need to find a way to get it updated or bring it about so i guess the question is we will be immediately in my mind we need to have some idea from above our heads at a selectman's level you know can we use this document obviously the goals don't tend to change very quickly in terms of the macro level goals but can we use the document or will it immediately be considered defunct just by its age by default? And if so, so that kind of feedback from selectmen, I think, would probably be a good idea. Comprehensive plans don't necessarily just like turn into dust and be worth nothing. However, it is an evolutionary kind of a document and we need to know whether or not we can quote it or not. It's the use of a supporting vehicle. Yeah, and I think, I mean, at least in the past year that I've been on the board, there's been various instances where I think it's been brought up, but I'm not sure it's been discussed at length. Mm -hmm. um, which is why I, which is why I said if you folks feel like it's something that you would need or would like a recommendation or something like that might kind of get the board to be like, okay, we really, if we have a committee saying that, they need this, or they like this to do their job. It might, it might be able to be like, okay, well, let's let's look more into this than we have previously. Right. Again, that's my thought. It's kind of a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Is it useful to us, or is it not useful to us moving forward? And that's for the the committee to decide. To to, I mean, as I get what you're saying and saying is, are you going to make recommendations if this document is valid? Not. I mean, that's. Everyone's opinion is different, but you folks doing your work for you to be like, okay, which in the discussion we're going to be talking about what what if anything can be done with these town lots and looking mm -hmm. at the comprehensive plan. I know that in the past there was things about walking trails or various different things. Could those be utilized for that? Yes or no? I mean that's going to be part of that discussion. Mm -hmm. But if you're like, well, no, then you know you're thinking these these parcels land, I can't remember, you know, the history is so much better than me, whether they're gifted or purchased or whatever, you know, that's what board made those decisions, were they taking the comprehensive plan that these parcels could be used in those capacities? I mean, so that's what I mean, like, so I get what you're saying, but like, is right. it too old, is it not? But it, it's... I'm trying to head it off at the pass, that if we are to use this as a reason to take action on anything that we might do, will it immediately be kicked back to us that, oh, well, that document's too old, it's not going to be of the, I think you guys are getting, I think and, you're getting my And I think if that would, I think So if we could have, like, for example, a, a small, uh, I don't know if an endorsement is the right word, but for example, if we had an idea that the selectmen and the powers that be as a whole, in a, in a broad-based kind of scenario, believe that the document still holds good knowledge, then we can obviously quote it, we can use it, we can refer to its parts as we recommend things. I just don't want to have us go six months down the line, a year down the line with recommending stuff to then turn around to find out that somebody says, oh, well, geez, that document's too old, it's not any, of any use anymore. So if we can head that off at the pass, that would be great. Well, the way we can head that off the pass is just do a review and addendum and add our date and signature on it. Sure. And then that makes that an up-to-date as of yep. now. So again, the process is what I'm looking for. If we can have that thought. So if you re we review it, just like with any the, sort of policy or procedure. The plan. Right. Yep. If we review the plan yep. as a group and say this is still holding 
uh, true as far as we are concerned, or if we're going to add addendums to it that we would like to see this or okay. that, yep. um, we would add that addendum, we vote on it, sign it, then that's an up-to-date comprehensive plan. We do not have to rewrite the entire thing. Correct. I wouldn't, but, I wouldn't tend to think so anyway. No. Yeah. I, that's big dollars. Yeah. Lots of time. A couple of years ago, <laughs> I did go through the plan. We did, yeah. And, and I, I mean, I, I pulled out every article that was pertinent. The per to pertain to the conservation. Plan. Whether it was still valid or not, and, and some of them weren't. You know, mm -hmm. they were just gone by or... Uh, so I, I guess in that case, since we have done an update, but we didn't sign it or vote on it, right? I no, we I didn't actually do it. Yeah. We, just, yeah. we just kind of read through to see read what through it. And, yeah, if and I remember correctly. which articles were applicable to right. us. Yeah. And Sherry was was talking about there was supposed to be uh, one of the items was a a, a fund set up, right. and that was right. turned out to be non-existent. So, mm -hmm. uh, but I, I I think I'd like some direction from the from the board. You know, do we, like you said, stay with what what's there? Right. Or, I, I or just don't want to, again, it's not. I consider that document a working document, the same as any forestry management sure. plan. Yeah. It doesn't just all of a sudden become useless when when it reaches a certain date. Yeah. It just needs to have an update. I, so go ahead. The, I'm sorry, Wayne or, or, and John. Maybe Joe, do you know what a, the comprehensive plan is? <laughs> <laughs> sorry. That is a very good start. Thank you. Sorry about sorry. that. Sorry. Well, I know what they are, but I don't know what's in this document. You are, it, it was written 15 years ago, 20 years ago? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Okay. So it's, I want to say I thought it was 04, yeah. Uh, I don't uh, remember. Okay. It, it was some kind of plan. It, it's a plan <laughs> that is comprehensive <laughs> for the whole town, and there's different sections concerning different uh, things in town. You know, buildings, schools, roads, uh, forestry, uh, demographics. Land use. Land is, use. is the biggest yeah. thing in yep. the sense that where you live, you need three acres. Where I live, I need a half acre. Where he lives, he needs two acres. What it did essentially was it took a rural little town, the people that were really kind of happy with, you know, with living the way they want to, and it kind of urbanized it a little sense okay well we're going to start thinking because like i said about the water okay, I, I just mentioned that but uh, your roads your schools uh, do you want to have a village zone like this is a village zone right here in this area here which really makes no sense because the soils are indicative to they're not they're not porous enough to to, mm -hmm. to take the high density of, of housing although it's a nice conceptional thing on a map. Yeah. So the friction involved between people who are knowledgeable in the sense that, yeah, that's great. That's a good concept. And these planners are a little bit sterile in the sense that they're, they're at a drawing board and they're pulling some you know, information. Putting words to pieces of land that really don't apply to it in the sense that it's, it's I, I can't explain it. I, like resource protection areas, you know. The whole town is a resource protection. Basically, the whole town would have been, for the lack of a better term, I'll call it surveyed, meaning like uh, asked of opinions of what we want the town to be. Mm -hmm. Asked of people in the town, asked of selectmen, all of these different things. And the, um, like I said, generally a lot of the information comes downstream from Southern Maine Regional Planning because they've got a lot of information from other adjacent towns and what other towns have done. How do we, if the town of Acton wants to be X or continue to be X or grow into being Y or whatever the, the concept is, it breaks everything down to, you know, this committee should have authority over this or this should do that or perhaps this is a tool or a way to develop a way to handle that whatever it happens to be. So this comprehensive plan really is truly comprehensive. It's huge. And um, we have certain articles within it that fall under our purview. Mm -hmm. So for example, things like, you know, zoning, uh, rural versus mm -hmm. urban. Commercial, um, commercial is a big thing. Commercial versus not, whatever it happens to be. So, it, so basically that's what the plan talks about as a whole. And it really is that macro, it's a macro document. And uh, 
like I said, so we went through, Mike and I, and other committee members at the time, and were you here too, Kelly? Mm -hmm. Right, so I'm sorry. So we basically went through the entire document and pulled out all the articles yeah. that seemed to pertain to what we, are. we uh, have some purview over or give an opinion on. And, um, and again, that's kind of what we're looking at now is just simply saying, is that whole entire document still pertinent? Are our goals, did they change between the old document or are, we, are they to be amended as time moves forward? That's kind of what I was getting at and simply saying, the first question that comes up of any time that we talk of managing a parcel of property is, are our recommendations congruent with the comprehensive plan? I just don't want us to go through all these steps to find out that somebody stands up and goes, well, the comprehensive plan was in 04, therefore it's void or something to that effect. My opinion is it's not doesn't work that way. However, I do want the people that are in the town, the selectmen that are above us, and anyone that's on the committee to understand what the document does show us. And, you know, some level of, again, in my words, endorsement from the selectmen that our goal is still, the plan is still, is still moving toward our goals. And if we quote, for example, Article 2, Section 5, whatever, is the reason why the Conservation Committee would like to do something, I just don't want us to go all through all this process to find out that somebody says, ah, but the plan's too old, ah, you know, it's no good, or what we do. I, so, I, I, can't, I can't see the, that happening. I can't. Not, we do not have a replacement comprehensive plan. I do feel that we can look at the articles that pertain to our committee and do our own update and we can present those to the select board sure. for approval. And then once we do that, at least we know our piece of the um, conservation plan has, has been updated. And we can sign off on that and then we can move forward with those articles based that's on our goals. Within, that and our within plan. our power, that's within our power. Yep. Um, because you know, a comprehensive plan, unless there's a new comprehensive plan, the town has to stand by that comprehensive plan as of this time. Sure. Um, and but I do see since we have pulled the articles, we can look at those articles and say, This is work, this is what we're working on, this is not what we're working on, um, this is no longer valid applicable applicable to right. what we we do as a committee and then we can update our own articles um, it's not our job to update the whole entire comprehensive no, no, plan no. it's our <laughs> job to update <laughs> our articles that pertain under the forest and conservation committee right and nor do i feel that the town are gonna is going no. to go hire a new plan because the conservation committee feels it's required either no, they, no. well <laughs> are there other committees in town, like the planning board, that are saying the same thing? I mean, I tend to, I try to attend meetings when I'm available, um, and I do believe that has been discussion because they have, like you folks, similar voice, similar in some meetings, ideas of like, well, if we're going to change zoning or, you know, just like, especially after the pandemic, the population increase, the housing shortage, like, you know, mm -hmm. what is the plan for the town? So I think that was a point of discussion for them at some okay. point. I think it was in two of the meetings that I attended. Yeah. yeah. But I do think either way, if we update our articles that we need to do, yeah. we can present those. And then if they say, well, we're going to rewrite the um, comprehensive plan for the whole town, our mm -hmm. articles are already done, mm -hmm. right? Because we have the most up-to-date for our forest and conservation. And we can present those to the board and say, we would like these added to your comprehensive plan mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as it is under our yep. duties as the Forest and Conservation Committee. Does that help? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. No, no. Most, most towns in the state have one. And, and many of them are 20 years old, but but most states, uh, most towns have them. And, and each county, the organization in each county, provided seed money and expertise uh, to help towns do that. So, it, you know, it started in the late 1990s, and the, I think the state saw a need for some type of town having a direction instead of just willy nilly development or. And the next thing you know, you've got, you know, a, a cement plant next to a school or 
you know, something like that. It'd be a good place for a cement plant, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what, what, if any action, should we? I'm going. To, I, I haven't really thought of this, but I think we should make. A, I'm going to make a motion that we look at the articles that are pertaining to the Forest and Conservation Committee and update them as we see okay. and bring forth to the board. Second that motion. Okay. I want to make sure John gets it. Sorry about that. No, take your time. I just came back from doing General Assembly in case you can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> You're right there. <laughs> Seven days doing these. <laughs> Good. Okay. So, just for discussion purposes, um, looking at what I pulled out of it, there's, there's a, I don't know how much more we can do. Um, I picked anything that had to do with conservation and forestry, and I don't know. But this would also be the time that we could add an article. If we I think that, and, and maybe, you know. maybe adding like our goals or mission mm -hmm. statement or that kind of thing to the plan under the format of the new Forestry and Conservation Committee, which wasn't in existence when the comprehensive plan was developed in 04. Yeah, I mean, the, the least we can do is just do that, kind of work with what we got, and then we present it to the board, and the board can say, no, yay, or nay, or thank you, or no thank you, um, but at least we can say we have made those steps to incorporate some art. Right. Because yeah. if I remember correctly, there were an awful lot of, um, kind of like our ordinance, there was an awful lot of verbiage toward mm -hmm. commission, the commission shall, or if I, mm -hmm. I could be incorrect, it's been a couple of years, but. There was an awful lot of verbiage I thought I remembered that it seemed to want to recommend quote unquote authority to us. No. Um, no. Mm, okay. Yeah, I think I'll believe you, but I'll need to. I, I think. Uh, there was, trust but verify. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was more t looking at Alfred's um, yeah. ordinance, mm -hmm. and that's a commission rather than committee. That's our ordinance, yes, but I'm saying the comp plan. Kept I, no, what I'm saying is like maybe that's where you're getting that. Because I don't I don't see that in, in the notes I took from the comprehensive. Okay. But right. I could be I, I could be mistaken. Yeah. Again, it's been a while since I've read through it. I, I do remember doing the same thing that you and I were talking about of article this pertains to us, article that pertains to that us. That was the Alfred right. uh, we did that with the Alfred Correct. ordinance too. Right, but I'm talking the act and comp plan. Yeah, we did yeah, that at one time. Thanks. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Did we get a second? We yep. Okay. Wait. Mm -hmm. I counted six to nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay. You got that, John? I sure do. Because I didn't write anything down. So. <laughs> so I think the first thing to accomplish that is to make sure that everybody has those articles to oversee. Um, I know that these, these gentlemen haven't had a chance to read. You're right, that's right. So. And, and you can look the at that on the plan. town website. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Yeah. Under useful links or right. whatever that. So do you have that in a man? I don't mean necessarily all the writing that you did, Mike, but do you have that in terms of saying this article, that article, and the other article do pertain to us just as opposed to the written format of what you got? I'm not following. If we're trying to get these guys to obviously read oh. through the entire oh, document is one thing, but I'm saying if we're going to zero in on our pertinent articles. If you say. go to section nine, starting at eighteen, I don't know what the it's, it's Roman numerals nine dash eighteen up through 29 is what I got. It's not the, what we decided was kind of pertain to us. Correct. Yeah. So rather than reading the whole other 50 pages of... That, that's all I was getting at is I didn't know if you had that location. I, I, I did. Because gotcha. you could really get lost in it. 
So it really are com our committee's duties to focus on those articles from 18 to 29, right? So that's, if you start reading everything else, you're going to go, oh, I, you know, trust me, I didn't ask. <laughs> um, so we just. You can read it. it. You, you can know. read it, but if you really, what we want to focus on is nine. If my eyes start going cross eyed. Yeah, 18 and to 29. Like, yeah. yeah. All right. Good. Good. Great. So one thing before we move on to new business, I just wanted to ask Dan if he could give any update on the Wilson Lake lot. Mm -hmm. Um, I there are things in motion. I'm not sure exactly what I'm allowed to share. Okay, that I didn't know if there was anything you could share. But the, the board is is it's not, has not been dropped from the board's mind. We're so, still working on some things. So I guess a follow-up question would be. So did our recommendation help? Yes. Okay. Yes, it, you're you bringing it up, and you know when you email me about it, you know I brought it up to the board then, and then your recommendation definitely like just kind of really solidified the concerns. And like I will say that there's questions like why would this be a concern, and then your your emails that we were able to share really enlightened us to like okay we could see why this would fall under. Yeah. Something that the committee would recommend. Yeah, I did go before the board and talk about that. So, um, but yeah, there are. It's it's something that's still on our agenda, and good. our office is that we're still working on things of that. Um, anything else on it? Moving on to new business. Um, you mentioned at the last meeting there was a possible or discussion about a possible land something up on H Road. You showed me an email. Oh, uh, the was it Walker? Or? Yeah, um, that is something. Well, we had an individual from the board who reached out about a property, um, and we were supposed to meet with them last week, but they had something come up, so the board is still planning on talking to them about. Uh, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, it was just the moose pond when you were talking. About? Was that moose pond? Yeah. Moose pond. Okay. Uh, yeah, you made comment about it somewhere in our travel, but I just didn't yeah. remember. Yeah. Yeah. So then we were supposed to meet with the landowner at the last last week's meeting, but they were delayed, so um, the town administrator is working on scheduling all the time to meet with them to kind of discuss what their thought process is and where things are going to go. Okay. Is, would you recommend any action taken by this committee on that subject? I would have to probably talk to the board about that? I mean, I can't I can't really think of anything. A recommendation or, like we did with the uh, Wilson Lake Law? I'll think about that. I'm going okay. to that, but that's okay. a good question. Mm -hmm. I'll uh, put that on next month's agenda. Do we need to know, or I don't remember what the circumstances behind any of this were. Are we allowed to know stuff? Yeah, uh, I mean, um, an individual reached out about a property that was been in their family um, that has been allowed for um, the boat launch for public use, um, and they were considering, uh, I believe, a family member had passed, mm -hmm. and they're going to be, kind of, I believe, doing something with the land, and they wanted to ensure that that piece of property remained for public access, and they're trying to figure out what best to do. Also, maybe that could be a recommendation. Um, I don't know if I should, I'll have to share that email with you if I didn't already. But so they, they kind of have been reaching out to different entities as to what they think would be the best um, possibility to ensure the continued use of that space um, as a public boat launch. But they had a couple other, um, what's the word? So this is a Stick private, with. this mm -hmm. is a small private property that has been used though for public access? Yes, the, fam the family has allowed it for, they, they know they allowed. The family's known, the family's allowed, and the, and the concept is as if the property may perhaps change hands upon someone's death that we want to try well, to I believe, continue. I believe, I believe a family member did pass, and I think that I'll have to double check on the email because it's been a while since yep. no, I'm just trying to understand what the, what the so conversation is. The individual about. reached out about wanting to Ensure that it continued if they and they wanted to know what the best means of doing that. Keeping within the family, donating it, like working with the different, various different things. Um, okay. And so that's what that discussion, that's what 
the board wanted to get more clarification because mm -hmm. even wasn't very clear in some instances. It started off and there's some spots where it got a little like foggy. So we needed some clarifications, which is why I'm kind of like not very clear right now, which is why we asked the individual to come in to speak with us so that we could ask some questions and get some clarifying information from them. Like if they're trying to wonder if they should put it in a trust or yeah, and, or, or yeah. work with other entities, mm -hmm. um, have the town, you know, mm -hmm. just various different um, things. But like I said, there, there are some, I don't know if stipulation is the right word, but things that they wanted to make sure remained true on this and we have to like look into mm -hmm. whether the town can take all those responsibilities or legally and just various different things. But we need, we need clarification as to exactly what they were okay. kind of asking for. Thank you. Okay. And when we had, I don't know if you were here for that meeting with Three Rivers was here yep. with Carl. He talked about that's something that they may be able to help us with. Correct. Right. So, yeah. And just looking through the notes on the comprehensive plan, section 9-25, that talks about uh, investigating potential public access, access trails, rep uh, recreational opportunities. Uh, so this would go along with the comprehensive plan and, and our, our goals. sounds pretty awesome. Awesome. Our, you know, We need to have more active involvement in this yeah. decision. So from your question, hearing things out loud, I feel like once we as a board have more information as to kind of what options they're looking at, that might be a recommendation as a committee to say what might be the best option that they named. Because they're asking us is something that we should give to the town, something we're through rivers, that that they they had a bunch of different ideas. Mm -hmm. So maybe that could be like as a committee, you know, we watched the meeting where they spoke, we saw this and we think the best we would recommend the best route for conservation and keeping this in public use would be going this route. So that could be, but again, we have to kind of get a clear idea. Yeah. But that could be, I think, the role of just making a recommendation of hearing the options, what we think would be best. Okay, good. Um, I think, if you don't mind, I'm going to skip down to C and we'll mm -hmm. leave the rest of the meeting for B. Mm -hmm. um, so Ruth Gutman, Gutman contacted me about two programs. One was a chainsaw safety course, yep. and the other was a rain barrel program. Um, and I think I shared those that email with, with all of you. Um, they're looking for our support and how we can advertise that. Uh, the chainsaw course is for beginners. Uh, the the guy that's putting that on, I, I've known him from my past work, and he, he knows what he's talking about. You know, he's a master logger. And, mm -hmm. uh, so, take that. it's, uh, you know, talking about chainsaw safety and, and, and uh, how to use them a little bit. You're not, you're not going to cut down any trees, but you'll understand how to use a chainsaw safely <laughs> so you don't go visit you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, We've had a few this summer. <laughs> yeah. And so they're looking to see if, if we would support that and advertise it on our website, you know, on the, the town's website. And if that's something we want to do, uh, I think it, if we just, we're just putting the word out. And if anybody here wants to take it, um, I think it's a hundred bucks. But, um, My question is, is the liability of, uh, but how's the liability being formed? Does he have an, Does he have this all written out for a proposal on how this class is going to go? Because I do know liability may lie if anybody gets hurt or anything like that. Right. How is that going to be addressed? Right, and and uh, you know he's from a reputable firm that does this all the time. This is their job. Okay. Our safety, logging safety. I just think we probably would need some sort of documentation to state that that's oh, going yeah. to be. Yeah. Um, and, you know, obviously I, people will sign. I, it's going to be probably in the Alfred area. I don't know. If, Although it's not in Atkins. It's not, it's no, no, no. It's, 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 yeah, 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 the Three Rivers area. Yep, yep. Um, so, uh, yeah. 
I mean, I don't see any no. liability on our yeah. part yeah. if we yeah. just forward that information. Yeah. Right. It's all on that. Yeah. 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 Right. And we're not a, a contributor, so that liability could turn Right, right. No, no. Well, that's why I was asking about, like, is it on town property or no, anything like it's that? Gonna it's going to be not even an act. Perfect. That's just where. Well, that's just where my mind is going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Right. Well, I mean, he if he's a master logger and he does this for a living, then that means he's already got his insurance situation pretty yeah. well in order. Saint Pierre, Jim Saint Pierre. Yeah. Jim, from where? Uh, okay. But I, when I taught forestry and logging, mm -hmm. you know, we used the same curriculum. Uh, and the other one was the rain barrel program. Mm -hmm. You could buy a rain barrel, put it under your gutter, and uh, use it for watering your garden. I think both of those are excellent educational opportunities, and I don't see any reason why we can't support that. And, okay. And care at no, like what you guys think for people yeah, who are the interested. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Do you want? Is that motion? So I'm just oh, like okay. <laughs> I make a motion to approve our recommendation and ability to pass on information regarding both of those programs. Okay. Uh, well, we have the same program. The, Trump, the Three Rivers Land Trust Proposal Chainsaw Safety Course and Rainbow Program. Do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Would that be by our <laughs> The website or something? I, I think there's a place that we could put yeah, it in. Yeah. News, town administrator, and, yeah. and, and the active newsletter. We could probably send it to Dan to put it out in the active newsletter. Yeah. 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 There's a if you scroll down on the website, there's news. Let me talk to Ruth first and see, mm -hmm. you know, what yep. if she has a canned thing all ready to go, and and then we'll go from there. Also. All right. Yep. Okay. You're you good. I. Do we need a second or motion? No, we got okay. a second. All those in favor? Aye. Yep. Good. I lost a couple steps there. Go back. <laughs> <laughs> what do you need? Nothing. No, okay. good. I, so Joe seconded it. Kelly oh, okay. gotcha. made the motion. Okay. All right. So the last thing, and, and you know, I, I try not to run over 7 o'clock, but um, <clears throat> for some of you, we've talked a lot about the town for farm law and what we could do there, way, way back when I first started. Uh, and now we've been out on the Hebo Hybo lot mm -hmm. and saw that. So, you know, I think it's time, and, you, and if you think I'm wrong, then you say so. And, but I think we ought to start thinking about, it. you know, looking at the management plans, what do we want to do? Mm -hmm. What's the next next step? And if, it might be easier to, to break it down Keep a hybrid lot, and then yeah, down I agree. Home. I think it's, it, to me, it sounds like the Hebo hybrid lot. We still we need to make sure that we have access to, and I think that's going to be our first, you know, to create um, act, public public access. Well, to. If if we want to, if we decide that that's a good idea, correct. The, all that four wheeler trips around the stream there did some damage. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't necessarily have to be ATV public access. So. No, it's fair. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It can be public access for wildlife observation. It can be um, public access for educational opportunities for homeschool children. You know, um, all sorts of different things like that. You know, um, without it being recreation vehicles. Right. So, John, if, if I may suggest, you go high a lot, and then underneath that, just bullets for access. Thank you. And then you talked about uh, wildlife concerns, and maybe that could be something we could look into even without improving the access. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, is there anything else? Uh, I think in the beginning, was, you know, that access will go in. Mm -hmm. It's pretty tough. So, you know, if you're going to use it for kids' education and stuff. As we know, we know it's a pretty uh, hefty wharf going in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. yep. And the woods are pretty thick. So yeah. I don't know if the town could make money doing a little bit.
bit of logging, mm -hmm. which would you know, probably be good for the wildlife. Well, as a, as a blanket statement, the we have not done any work on the town farm lot. We've got that pretty well documented. The last work on Hebo Ivo property was in 06. So even though I have not been across all of the acreage of the Hebo Ivo lot recently, I would say the timetable would probably indicate that there should be some work or it, it, it is likely to need some work, some updates. Uh, particularly since we saw all that ice storm damage that mm -hmm. was just down all over the roads, all over the trails, everything was pretty well closed off just because of the, the storms that have happened and such. So uh, again, I can make that blanket statement that I feel both properties should have work done on them in order to maintain. And even if we look at only the Hebo Hibo, for example, toward its access, you you know, we're going to have to identify that. We're going to have to say, you have to get to it in order to do something in order to improve the access. We're going to have to get to it in order to um, mitigate the water quality issue with the four wheelers that are going to be on it or something like that. So trying to just leave the door open for whatever work may come in the future. I'm not giving recommendations specifically on either of these properties, but the idea of the Hebo Hybo property is, is we, need to have our hands, our fingers into that lot in order to mitigate what's happened on it since the last logging job has occurred. That would likely be within forestry concerns, that would likely be within water quality concerns, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the Hebo Hybo lot. And like I said, the town farm lot has not seen any work since the 80s. So, so. and I'm not speaking for Steve, because no. we're a little conflict, maybe, but. In my mind, the management plan is 20 years old. Mm -hmm. The Hebo Hybo one? Yeah. 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 So when I look at this, I think maybe we ought to update the plan so we know the extent of any of that storm damage. Right. You know the extent of any of the, the erosion, the wildlife, you know, and go in to upgrade the plan with, with those things in mind. Right. Well, like we just talked about, the comprehensive plan perhaps needs an update and that they're all working documents. That does go back to Mike's point. And, and I think take that down the road, that means it's going to cost money. Mm -hmm. And that's something that... Um, right. So are they going to a lot? And I'm just throwing out a number, you know, $5. <laughs> I'll give you the five dollars. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, so you know whether or not the, the board would want to pursue that, um, and I think that would apply to the, the town lot too. Mm -hmm. It's been how long on that one? On the town farm lot? Yeah. Uh, that one was uh, what nineteen. So I. Uh, okay. So, so and, and it has not seen work since then. So right. I don't see that one as needing an update yet. But maybe just for the storm damage. Yeah, but we've been up there since that storm. Yeah, I have not that. seen much there. Okay. No. Did you you two didn't go on the town no, no. I was Yeah, they came on after. Yep. Okay. Uh, Daniel, do you know if they um, there is anyone who kind of works with grant grants in this town? to kind of work with we, conservation grants that may be able to tap into to kind of help us with this scenario? The only people that I know grant specific, like just from my experience, is somebody in Lebanon for the library, the librarian, mm -hmm. she's had a lot of grants, and I know that um, Chief, Chief Ham has actually gotten a lot of grants from the fire department to cover a lot of things. Um, so we do not have uh, to I can address that a little bit, but go ahead and finish uh, it. Not that I'm aware of like, anyone specific who's like, does all the grants in the town or anything like that. I mean, and then obviously the town minister, because she's involved with all of everything. <laughs> but I've said it's great to that. But other than that, I'm not 100% I'm not sure. But. So to follow up on your point, Kelly, the scenario behind grants, oftentimes when towns are having these forestry plans written, one of the federal trickle down to state, trickle down to town scenarios is a project learning tree grant. Mm -hmm. There are multiple, um, basically that is the public version of what is a private cost share scenario from the USDA. Right. 
the issue with that, and that's going to be up to the committee and up to the town to decide. The infrastructure to do such a thing is extremely high. Now, a lot of towns have done those. It's not that I'm not recommending it. I recommend an update to the plan. Mm -hmm. I would just simply say that if we already have a working document out there, though, the, for example, there needs to be someone which is not within the forester purview but works with the town or for the town in order to oversee and handle the grant writing situation. What I'm getting at, there's a, there's a big infrastructure associated with the ask and the supervision of the plan because it cannot be from me in a similar manner Correct. that I can't do it from within the committee format either. Um, so the question would be, for example, what is the process behind it? And I'm just giving you an overall macro statement that mm -hmm. there is a massive level of procedure attached to it. Oh, wait, and I, if we I, do I, have it, from multiple grants, so and if we do I, actually I, already have one, I can tell you that it would not be anywhere near what we the cost to update. That in my mind, it would have the wheels greased a lot quicker, meaning. Um, if we go to the town and say we need a person, we need X numbers of hours per week, we need X documents, we're talking years, years, years out in order to get that to happen, to get that project learning tree process to happen. If it were a function of saying, hey, you know, Forrester, go out and update the plan that's already there toward this, this, and this goal, the process is much more truncated and can happen pretty quickly and a lot more inexpensively than if you went through the, the process of it. So and again, I don't have numbers in front of me or anything like that, but I know that it's, it is a very heavily um, bureaucratic, bureaucratic procedure. Yeah, because it's, a, because it's federal money coming to state, coming to town, the purview is a very high level. And if the town were to say, hey, why don't we just grant X in order to go toward the update of the existing plan, then it's, then it's it's pretty straightforward that way if, if the town so chooses. So that could be a research uh, something to look into, I suppose. Any thoughts on the, well, you haven't seen it, the town time lot? Uh, yeah, I, you talk about, you know, Educational value that to me is, be, yeah. is a lot yeah, easier. That I find much more usable to the town. The access is better. The fact that it had been the town farm with various um, town poor farm activities on it and historical documents that are within the town pertaining to its use underneath of the town ownership. Mm -hmm. The educational level of that one, plus the fact there's a cemetery out there, foundations, wells, yeah. all these things. That one has much more it's potential. It's pretty cool, I really. Yeah. And if you. It's like a little city. It, it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You, if you guys get a chance, it, it's not that hard. It, to it's really funny too because how the glacier came across. Well, I was waiting for you guys. Mm -hmm. I was scouring around the thing, and I found <laughs> big chunks of quartz with those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Up in that high level, and it's like gravel in certain areas. So when the glacier came through, it it carried all this various stuff that is usually found toward the lake. Yep. So at one point, there might have been a river up there, and it's. I, I think the, the biggest drawback is the access to it, in the sense that if the town went ahead and improved that road, it would turn into a, a thoroughfare. You yeah. know, it would be. That, that's the only thing getting What's back. That? What street is that on? Uh, it is uh, on Town Farm Road, but Town Farm Road is a discontinued road similar to the Hebo Ohio Road, but it's in do, much, much Do you know where the sand shed is? No. Uh -huh. You know when we went on County Road and we, we took a left to get to the school? Yeah. Well, at that stop sign, you took a sharp left. You back up about 200 feet, you can see a road go up, up the hill. There's a road that goes up the hill. It's, it's doable. I wouldn't drive. <laughs> no. I mean, I think I'd have a better shot up that road that's shorter, that's not with as many rocks. Oh, I agree with you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, if I knew, if I had to choose, I would have 
chosen to drive up that road than the other one. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> But definitely more accessible. Yeah, so again, yeah. potential for that lot for educational use, yeah. for conservation uses. Again, that has a prime designated wetland on it, uh, actually on the lot. So again, there's a lot more opportunity and concern there. And we have much more ability to do something with it. For educational purposes, yeah. you know. Right. Um, you partnerships. Yeah. Like, like Steve said, in partnerships. Like, in you partnership. have the Historical Society, you might have interest, you have the Cemetery Committee, which is something that you folks had in your goals was working in partnerships. So, like, that could be a, a great project mm -hmm. that comes from multiple points mm -hmm. and has multiple what was that guy that groups. Ham. Huh? Ham. Was he at, at meetings way, way back? Yep. That was him. He yep. knew every cemetery in yep. New York County. And he's looked up the documents like he actually brought to me one time the idea that, well, in 1926, there was X bales of hay baled out there. <laughs> you know what I mean? And That's I'm like, cool. okay, all right. That is a cool historical piece, yeah. though, right? And yeah. Could be some really great education, you know, putting up, like, you know, like we do at Mary Grant. Yeah, have plaques. Yeah, yeah, have plaques that say, uh, yeah. this is the family that lived there, this is what happened. And we, we do have $300. For, <laughs> for signage, so you know that's another possibility. How much do these cost? <laughs> yeah. Those are from I think more just the office budget. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all the committees. You need to build it. Yeah. So so you know to the range point. You know where is it? Yeah. Here's a sign. Go up here a quarter of a mile and. And then a sign at the boundary line that says you are now entering the town farm lot. You know, some, I mean. Yeah, I mean, it, the thing is, let's think about our town, right? Acton is well known for stepping up to volunteer and um, help out in these sort of scenarios. Yep. You know, having a fundraiser or any, you know, things like that. We can kind of think outside the box a little bit here and try to see how we can preserve um, our conservation, you know. Um, Dan, we both know that people come out and try to help out with everything, right? You know, you know, we, you know, Mary Grant, people show up and come and help us clean yep. every year. And, uh, Boy Scouts, the Boy Scouts are always looking for duties, specific yep. duties. And 4-H, um, our 4-H clubs are always looking for ecological safety. So I, I think we sometimes we may get a little narrow thinking about what can't be done. We should probably look about who we can utilize in this town, how we can make a partnership, and how mm -hmm. we can make that property a good thing for everybody. For example, Boy Scouts camping out there, doing, you know, having their camp out out there. I mean, they camp at Mary Grant after they clean. That's part of the deal we make with them, you know. So uh, I, I just think these are all great ideas that we could probably ooh, just go outside the box a little bit and maybe this things, these things will happen a little quicker. <clears throat> I, I don't know what you think. Yeah, well, for example, we've had, um, I'm not sure who spearheaded this at the time or if it still is happening because I haven't been asked to do it for a while, but the sixth grade class of the elementary school always met over at the mm -hmm. Smith Farm on uh, Loon Pond Road. And we had everyone from Peter Smith, the dad, talking of wildlife mm -hmm. and the brook that is Heath Brook, which is actually the brook that runs through the town property as it crosses under Milton Mills Road. Mm -hmm goes down toward uh, Loon Pond down there. So we've had everything from, they would have me in for a half of a day of forestry talk. Um, and we just broke up and the sixth graders all broke up into groups and then they would rotate their yeah, way yeah. through. Yeah. So I mean, something like that, again, I don't know what its status has been over the last year or two, because I think the teachers have changed a little bit too. And maybe that has meant that some something may not be the same as it's been. but. You know, this would be a great location for that. Should um, we just put some signage and things like that? Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Now we, there is a huge. Just a reminder: there is also a huge homeschool community mm -hmm. um, in this area that are always looking for things like that. Mm -hmm. So I, I think there's multiple ways that we can get this done. We just have to actually make a plan and. That's. That's the, plan. <laughs> That's the plan. That's the plan. Well, I, I, I think I wanted to have this as kind of a round table, just throw stuff out, and, and if 
if everybody's agreeable next month, we can, with the other stuff, um, kind of concentrate a little bit mm -hmm. and maybe pick one or two of those items and, and see what how we can proceed. Well, I mean, for example, toward the signage, worth discussion at least is to say that if we ended up having you know, the small placards put up every so often along the frontage of both of the lots, Hebo Hibo as well. Yeah. I mean, as an opinion, this is a question I'm asking as opposed to offering information, but would that encourage or discourage some of the uh, damage that's going on on the Hebo Hibo, for example? So, you know, some might say, oh, well, if it's public property, it's inviting. But on the other hand, some may say, well, geez, the Hebo Hibo property, we didn't know that it wasn't just some out-of-state landowner. You know, stories that get thrown around sure. from whether it be the, you know, four-wheeling communities or whatever about this thing. If you, if you signed it up as being part of the town forest and owned by the town, you know, a question would be good to ask is to say that would that encourage or discourage? Unfortunately, I think that's trying to predict human behavior. If I can do that, yeah, no, that's right. if I can do that, my ER would right. run a lot smoother. This is true. Um, this is true. You know, it's just, you know, I, uh, I think we always got to think positive and think on the best of people. And yes, we do get disappointed on occasion, but if we do create something for the town that's for the town for the especially for our kids i think that has a different um, sale to it than right well i would someone. contend that the signage would help to discourage that i think so too yeah mm -hmm. and we could also you know make signage we can use natural materials you know stuff right there you know kind of make it that sort of a scenario and get some creativity with it right you know I have lots of ideas, but you know, I'm talked a lot tonight, so. <laughs> <laughs> you talk about creativity, that's <laughs> an artist, artist talent, not this guy. Um, okay, so need a little direction for next month? Mm -hmm. um, we've, we've got, I think if I, get the minutes and look through those bullet points and then uh, we can see what, maybe I'll list them in the, in the agenda and we can see what we want to hit first. Is it a possibility to send them out before the meeting so we can come back with some ideas to make it, this? It's up to the secretary. Is that up to the secretary? <laughs> what do you think? You know, is that something we possibly could do? The, the potential exists. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, so I'm not putting the pressure, but it, may, it might help if we come back with some ideas. Yeah. Take a look at them and say, hey, I have this idea. I have this idea. Well, instead, instead of waiting to send them out with the agenda, I'll send them out as soon as I get them out. Yeah. So you might want to take a look at them and do some editing first. Well, that's... Goes without saying? Okay, good. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> I've had a word off this. <laughs> John, I spent two and a half hours in a debate over the words aggregate and compile last week. Trust me, I know. <laughs> you get a secret pocket for your nips in that yeah. sweatshirt or something? <laughs> no, but in about two minutes. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's great. Perfect. So next meeting is October 1st. And... Um, I'll relay that to Jen so we don't have any confusion about yeah. road. Sorry, that was, that was my husband. He got a text message and so he's like, wait, how is that going to happen? And all I reason I asked was because I had to figure out Kaplan. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had assumed that they were separate, so. Mm -hmm. That implies that we had a conflict on week two of the month, or were we on week? Yeah, it wasn't. It I'm trying to remember what the what the conflict it turned out was. not to be a conflict. They just sent the wrong date. Or am I mean in October? <laughs> I mean in October. No. <laughs> oh, if yeah. it's listed as October first, am I presuming then that we had a conflict on the second Tuesday? Oh, it Ooh. should be the second Tuesday, correct? This is it should second. be. Why can't I do that? Oh, oh. <laughs> You're gone. I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> So I recognize that I have, a lot of I, just, I have to. I have a doc's appointment in Ellsworth. So. Gotcha. Uh, 
Yeah. Yeah, I just didn't remember the surface. Yeah, um, I think we had discussed this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I've known about that for yep, a while. I'm fine with it. Okay. So is everybody okay with the yeah. first? Mm -hmm. uh, Calibre first. Yes. Correct. Okay. I'll confirm that with Cal, uh, Jennifer and go from there. Okay, great. All right. I make a motion to adjourn. I second it. All right. All in favor? Aye. Great. Good job.